So when I started college, I went to SUNY Geneseo for two years and I studied math, actually. There was no art or animation anywhere in my life at the time except just as a hobby. And then over the course of those two years, I realized that I wanted to do art and animation. But the math portion of that always stuck with me. And now with the art that I'm doing today, I'm realizing that more and more of it slowly involves the math that I learned, or at least the concept of math in general, and figuring out how to apply math to the different art that I do. I've always had like a special sort of affinity for doing kind of math projects on the side. And this isn't like the heavy math, like differential equations and integrals and all of the symbols and stuff like that. This is more um, just taking simpler concepts. Like for example, one of my favorites has always been the Fibonacci sequence and what you can do with those sequence of numbers, finding different ways to represent those numbers visually. You know, people always talk about the Fibonacci sequence as always being part of this like grand, like mystical thing about the universe. And people have found very um, interesting spots that it appears in nature. Um, and there always seems to be some sort of visual connection to these numbers, whether it be through the spiral or whether it be through like the number of seeds on a pine cone or something like that. So through a concept like the Fibonacci sequence, you, always, you already start to get a little hint that math can be applied in a visual sense in ways that make sense for a lot of people, which I think is important because math is seen as really inaccessible for a lot of people. For me, I've been manipulating the Fibonacci sequence for a few years using a couple of rules that I've sort of set for myself that I feel are very um, fundamental. So I get these different sequences of numbers that are sort of derived from the Fibonacci sequence. And after manipulating those, I try to figure out different ways to express those numbers visually, set up some more rules for myself so like if I have this sequence of numbers I draw a line for this number and it goes in this direction um, if it's an odd number or an even number like I have a design set that's based on graph paper and it might not look like much once once the sequence is done but you do have a shape that could be used for um, it might be a good floor tile design it might be uh, good for something else you don't know take all of the digits possible in the sequence and set them up in a circle and then I draw lines between them based on how they are arranged in the sequence and I get these just these really interesting shapes which maybe aren't really seen as you know fully fledged designs in themselves but they could be basic um, building blocks for something bigger. You apply a couple of rules that you set for yourself and then you just see where the result takes you. Um, and it produces shapes in the end, or lines even. And then you use those lines and shapes and maybe you add more rules, so maybe you get more intricate shapes, more intricate lines, and um, you keep producing these kind of building blocks that you can use for other designs. So then you have this whole concept of like, okay, well, how, how much of this art that you make via instructions that you assign for its creation process, um, how much of it, like there's a whole like individuality, like identity thing along with it. Cause then it's like, okay, if I make these rules or construct or instructions for my art and it's almost like it sort of makes itself, then how much of it is really mine? How much of it is really sort of like ingrained in the concepts that I'm sort of digging into and not really my own work? It's a question that I've had with the work that I um, produce. I still sort of attach a sense of identity to the work because as far as I know, um, it's, it's not a very popular way of producing art. Although I just think it's really interesting how everybody finds their own way of making art that works for them and how they always draw on their own past experiences to uh, figure out what their own unique style is. And I think more and more so like having this sort of mathematical backing is my own unique style. And so I guess that that counts for something in the end. I like it so much, I even have it on a shirt. Look at that, I carry my math with me wherever I go. 